This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today we're going to be looking at what was almost the most pick-resistant master lock ever, the Model 18. Let me start by saying that for the purposes of this video, we're going to put aside the normal master lock vulnerabilities, things like shimming and wrapping. Rest assured, those flaws are still present in this lock, but we're going to focus in on the core, which is really the interesting part. You see, this padlock is master lock's reply to products like the Quickset Smart Key and Schlag Secure Key. Those locks allow a user to quickly and easily rekey a lock without any specialized tools or training. This is not, of course, a standard pin tumbler lock, but instead a slider sidebar core. And even more than that, this lock has a reverse sidebar. What I mean by that is that the sidebar is spring biased inwards toward the core rather than outwards toward the lock body. It's this inward spring tension that allows you to use a sidebar with squared off rather than beveled edges. This is important because when you use a sidebar with squared off edges, when you put tension on the core, it locks the sidebar in place rather than forcing it inwards and causing it to bind on the sliders. Now what this also means is that this lock is probably unpickable with the traditional torque and set method. Now the reverse sidebar is not a new concept. It was pioneered, I believe, by General Motors back in the 1930s, and to this day, I think it remains one of the most pick-resistant locks ever put in a car. Now I'm going full lock nerd right now, so I'm probably losing some of you. So here's what we're gonna do. First, I'm going to show you what these locks look like on the inside, and I'm going to do it with this lock on which I have already chiseled off the rivet heads. While we're in there, I'm going to show you what I believe to be a flaw in Master Lock's implementation, and hopefully we'll be able to put that information to good use and pick this one open. But before we do any of that, let's take a look at how the rekeying system works. It's actually very simple. All you do is insert the key and turn it 90 degrees. That lines up a small hole in the face of the core with a hole in the bottom plate. We then put this master lock rekeying tool into that hole and press it in. While holding it down, you can remove the key then insert a new one, and this will take any quick set five pin KW1 key. We then remove the rekeying tool and it should be reset. Okay, let's see what's on the inside of this lock. So you can see these locks come apart pretty easily if you chisel off the rivet heads. It's actually not hard to do if you put a lock in a vise, but very difficult to do if it's out in the wild. Let's pull this core right out. And we don't have to take it apart any further for me to show you what I believe to be the most significant flaw in this lock. And right here you can see part of the reverse sidebar. Now what makes reverse sidebars so difficult to pick is that there's no way to get the sidebar to bind against the sliders because the only thing pushing it inwards is just this tiny little spring clip that goes around the side. However, Master Lock left the entire side of the core open. What that means is I can take a tool like this one, which I made for this task, reach around the side of the lock and push in on the sidebar. And if I can push that in hard enough, which is actually not an easy thing to do, I can bind the sidebar against the sliders and then pick the lock pretty easily. Now, while we're zoomed in here, let me show you one key portion of this lock. Right here, you can see a little nub that's actually attached to a comb-shaped locking bar. And that locking bar is what has to be moved out of the locking mechanism to get the rekeying function to work. And I can show you how that works if you can look very carefully. We can rotate this 90 degrees, and when it reaches the 12 o'clock position, it gets captured by a small plastic lever. That lever is actuated by the rekeying tool. If you look carefully, you'll be able to see it lift that locking bar out. There we go. 
Okay, let's take this apart a little bit more and hopefully you'll be able to appreciate what that does. First thing we have to do is remove the driver from the back of this. And then we need a C-clip remover. As I'm taking this apart, I should note that this lock is actually more like the Acetwin than any other sidebar lock. And that's because the bidding for the sidebar is actually in the sidebar itself rather than in the sliders. So when we reprogram this lock, we don't reprogram the sliders as is the case with the Quick Set Smart Key. What we're doing is reprogramming the sidebar. And because of that, it actually has a huge sidebar in here. So next let's remove this top cover and that exposes most of the rekeying mechanism. Unfortunately, it is made out of plastic. We have this lever which lifts the comb-shaped locking bar out of place and then a little plastic actuator for that lever. Now, right now, the only thing holding this in place is actually this tiny little locking bar because it sticks out from the core. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to remove that. You can either take this clip off the side, which I found is hard to do and nearly impossible to put back. The other way to do it is turn it 90 degrees and lift it out from the top. Now that we've done that, we should be able to pull this core right out. Okay, now that we have the core out, you can see the huge sidebar which dominates the entire left side of the core. You can see how this locking bar inserts into the side sidebar. And you can also see a little piece back here, and this is really important for our picking. It's part of the rekeying mechanism, and what it does is lock the core in place at the 12 o'clock and, and 3 o'clock position, I should say. The reason it's there is to make sure you don't accidentally rekey your padlock to no key, which would obviously be a problem. So what it does is it sticks out just a tiny little bit whenever the key is not fully inserted. However, what that also means is that we're gonna to have to address that when we pick this. Otherwise, even if we set the entire sidebar, the core will not turn. So there's a tiny little button on the back right side of the keyway that we're gonna to have to address after we pick the sidebar. Let's take this sidebar out. And then you should be able to see five moving elements inside of the sidebar. And those are what set the bidding. Let's see if we can give you a close up of that. If you look very carefully, you can see that they are held from sliding up and down by the four prongs of that comb shaped locking bar. So you can see why when you pull that out, it would allow those little moving elements to slide up and down. And when it's in place, you have your bidding locked in. Then we have the core itself. Nothing particularly interesting about these sliders. You can see they have gates right in the middle of them. But other than that, they're just flat brass plates that are spring-loaded and ride along the key. Okay, now that we've seen all of that, let's get to picking. And I have to say, this is an unusual method of picking. And because of that, I have done it in my hand but it's very difficult to do while giving you any view of the, the picking. So I'm going to put it in the vise, which is gonna give you a much better view. Now the hard part of this whole process is positioning this tool along the side so we can tension it. So let's give it a shot. I think I have it in place. We have to push it in pretty hard. And let's see if that's enough to bind the sliders. OK, 
Okay, I think I have five, four, two, I think we might have gotten it set. If so, I'll be able to rotate it just a tiny little bit. Let me remove that. Now we have to address that tiny little button I told you about that keeps the core from turning. And we got it open. So as you can see, once you tension that sidebar, getting this lock open is not difficult. So this has been the master lock number 18, a padlock with lots of potential that I think fell short of the mark. The sad part is that with a ball bearing locking mechanism and some better protection for that sidebar, this lock would be competing with locks way above its price point. Okay, that's it for today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.